Welcome to the Army Football Podcast. I'm Sal Interdonado, beat writer for the Times Tower Record, here with my co-host Steven Anderson, uh, to your captain of the Army football team. Steve, it's been a while, but Army's been on quite a roll since we last talked. They're in the midst of a winning streak. They had a bye week uh, last week to prepare for this big game against Air Force coming up in, I call it Colorado Springs, Colorado. Um, you know, just just talk about what, first off, talk about what you've seen in the past couple weeks. Um the, the last three or three games for Army that 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 you've seen that you liked in, in, during their streak here. Yeah, I think the biggest thing uh, that uh, cannot uh, go unsaid is that they um, they truly believe they're going to win every game. Um, they are, you know, with you know a comeback, you know, throwing the ball down the field um, all the way to the last second uh, of a game for a victory, and then the defense having a uh, a bend but don't break mentality um to to basically end the game and, and win the game uh that way so uh just, just a great time to be an army football fan um and this uh this winning streak they're on right now is is exciting going into the the first game of the commanders and chief trophy you know we know we got to be there for and beat navy to um to own that title so uh this is the beginning you know they're bowl eligible they're going to our forces bowl one of the one of the balls, you know, near and dear to my heart, and uh, um, I think that takes some some pressure off um, the guys to know that they they've achieved one of their goals and given them extra confidence that all right, now let's go get that next goal and the next goal and, and the most important goal is that Commanders and Chief Trophy. Yeah, what was it like? We should touch on this. What was it like as a former football player watching that last drive uh, that Kelvin Hopkins engineered off the bench uh, with that what, one second left completing that touchdown pass to Jermaine Adams? I mean, personally, me, Steve, when Kelvin, uh, Kelvin Hopkins was put into the game, I'm like, wait, Ahmad Bradshaw had a pretty good throwing game. And I'm like, he had some confidence in that game. I'm like, what is the staff doing? That tells you I'm the reporter they're the coaches, you know, um, just, just yeah, talk about absolutely. what you saw, what you, what, what you saw, you know, watching that. Yeah. I think the, you know, I, I, you know, I'm the opposite way where, you know, as soon as I see a change is made, I'm like, okay, the coaches obviously know what they're doing here. Like, let, let me see, it. let me see it coaches. You know, I'm a believer. So, so show me, show me the way, you know, show me the right way to believe. Uh, and all it took was a couple passes, a couple plays. I was like, all right, well, here we go. Like, the coaches know what they're doing, um, you know, and it, it was just remarkable to watch Army throw the ball all the way down the field. And, you know, we, all year we've talked about we're going to need to throw the ball. We're going to need to throw the ball. You know, when are we going to see it? Um, and the coaches were just cool, calm, and collected and knew, you know, who they could rely on and who to call upon at that time. What a what a throw. What a back shoulder throw for the, for the victory. And just overall, you um, just a great drive, um, very unique drive um, that Army doesn't put together. You know, we're we're a dry, you know triple option team, so to have thrown the ball all the way down the field was uh, remarkable to see. Yeah, you know, in this in this last season plus, you know, last season and then you know through eight games this season. Wow, the offense has taken us on some some wild drives. You know, the Navy drive that Ahmad Bradshaw engineered for the game winner um, to break the streak. Then you got the bowl game where they had a win in overtime, and uh, Jordan Asbury takes the pitch in for a touchdown. And now you get this. Now you get the um, the Kelvin Hopkins heroics, and you know I, I haven't really been around a win like that, Steve, at Mikey Stadium in a while. You know, I mentioned the miracle at Mikey with Kevin Dunn and the hail mary pass. That Army later beat the Tulane in overtime, and it just it just you know, like you said, the fan base has got to be Steve. You got Army got a, a vote in the AP poll for twenty fourth place this week, and they were on a bye week, you know. Yeah. So so I mean, you know, this is starting to get out there a little bit. I think among the service academies, you know, Navy and Air Navy more than Air Force has been a consistent winner, you know, and they, and they get all the a lot of the publicity and get a lot of the spotlight. Air Force, you know. With all due respect, we'll talk about this. You know, you know the rivalry. There's nothing compares to Army Navy. You know, the, the Army Air Force game, the Navy Air Force game. Yes, it's important. It's a, it's a first leg to the Commander in Chiefs, but you know, it's 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 the Army Navy game. Coach Munkin told me nothing compares to that, right? I mean, but wh where does this where does this game fit in with Army and Air Force in your mind? Oh, it's up there. I mean, I you know, again, I, I respect you know all Air Force and 
all the all the guys at Navy, but man, oh man, on there's nobody I hate more than on that Saturday. Um, and uh, no, it's a, it's up there. I mean, I never really, you know, the atmosphere around Army Navy is just is what really draws the crowd, and how it's the only game on Saturday now um, when we play. Um, but it, it, it's bragging rights. You know, um, we know Air Force, you know, kind of controls the series all the time. Yeah. Um, it's going to take some time to, to catch up to them in, in that regard. But, um, you know, we, we, there's just a sense of pride. Like, you know, we know what we do is much harder than what they do. And they believe what they do is much harder than what the Army does. I don't know how they could believe that. But, you know, it's we kind of, you know, at the Army, we, we have that, you know, that mentality of the grind and, and doing, you know, the very hard things that, you know, the harder rights and all that kind of stuff where, um, you know, when you think of an air force mentality, you don't really, you think of like, kind of like technology and flying planes, but you don't really think of like the infantrymen down on the ground doing the, doing the grunt work. So it's a sense of pride. Um, and man, oh man, I am, I, I, the Air Force Navy game was uh, one of the best games I've ever watched, you know, hmm. from a fan standpoint of like just a change of, you know, score and, and who, you know, the changes in the lead. And then watching this game, uh, I'm really hoping for another one of those just, you know, great games of, uh, for memory, you know, just for a memory. Um, of course, you know, it's going to be a great memory. Uh, you know when we win forty nine to nothing, but wow, uh, that, that's a bold, that's a bold prediction right there, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, again, uh, it'll be a great game no matter what. I, I just, you know, we continue to execute. We continue to play with that mentality we've had for the past three weeks. Um, there's no reason why we can't come out on top. You know, you look at the. Um, I, I I don't know if you're a big history guy, but you talked about the series a little bit. Um, in, in 50 years, they, they started playing, Army and Air Force started playing in 1967 at, you know, at Air Force. And um, Army's won three times, you know, three times in 50 years there. Um, what, I, you don't like to mention it every, every Army Air Force game, but what's, what's it like playing there, Steve? Would the, is it the altitude a factor there, or, or has it just been like... No, what, what, what it's, the, all bullsh- it's all bullshit, Sal. Yeah. It's all crap. Okay, you, you think it is? Like, you think the altitude yeah, is just uh, fake, news, that, fake news? Fake news? Or they, they absolutely, absolutely use that to a psychological, you know, effect on people. Um, I've played there, didn't get tired. You mm-hmm. know, didn't get anything. You know, I'm not there long enough to get acclimated to that. You know, I'm not there long enough. You know, we show up on Thursday night, maybe a Friday practice, yeah. and then we're playing. Like our bodies aren't used to. We don't know how to decipher between the effects of of the the air yet yeah. you know it's it, it takes time um so i i think it, i think that's all a psychological effect that i would use if i was them and, and you know uh if i can get into one or two players which then gets into you know becomes infectious and becomes toxic and everyone starts talking about it, that's exactly what i want you know instead of just ignoring the fact that yeah you are over a mile high um than you're used to, um, but you know, I you know I tore my ACL, I, you know, my junior year in Air Force, so um, that was a uh, you know it was on one of the last plays of the of the game. It was they had a the reason that, this is probably one of the main reasons why I, I hate Air Force uh, so truly tr- so dearly is they had a, a fourth and twenty five um, with about three minutes to go in the game, and it's. You know, at, at around their forty yard line, around our forty yard line. Yep. And uh, they threw a, a bomb to get within our, you know, within the five yard line, and they were already winning by, you know, twenty points. So yes, the the disrespect that that, that they show, they could easily just put it away and 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 showed some respect, but the the, the pure disrespect we felt as a team, um, and I felt as a captain at that point was. Um, very, very bad taste in my mouth. Um, and then the very next play, um, I tore my ACL. So, uh, yeah, so very, very bitter. Uh, and, you know, just did not appreciate uh, Coach Calhoun and, you know, lost a little respect for his coaching staff that day um, and, and going forward. 
Uh, but anyway, regardless of that, um, you know, I think it's a great atmosphere to play in. I don't yeah. think uh, I, I think it's an excellent stadium. I think it's a cool, you know, way they come. You know, you come down the tunnel. Um, of course, again, they have all the signs that say, you know, danger air levels. You know, you know, you're at this high in, in, in altitude. Um, just trying to get into your head of reading those signs and being like, oh shit, like I am pretty high up. And then it's that first time you get winded where you're like, oh man, maybe I really can't breathe as well. No, if you just take that tactical pause, you know, get back to your focal point and work on your, your energy management and clear and get ready for the next play, um, you'll see that it doesn't affect you. Yeah, I mean, you look at this uh, this team. This Army team has a you know, this experienced team at the top. You know, they have a lot of guys who played there a couple of years ago, and you know, you think that yeah, that wasn't even a topic of conversation at Coach Munkin's press conference. But I, I, I hear there's I, I get where the rob if you want to call the rivalry or a service academy series, I get where you know th- these coaches. Um, I heard Coach Calhoun get asked, "What's your relationship with?" Uh, Coach Munkin at his press conference yesterday, and he said very respectful, but these guys are not sharing Christmas cards, Steve. You know, these guys are going at each other with recruiting year-round, and, um, you know, so this is, this, is a, this is a big game not only for the season, because the team, what's the team's number one goal this season, Steve? It's to win the Commander-in-Chief's trophy. That's their number one goal. You know, so, that's right. So that's, and it hasn't can't happened. Do it. You can't you, do it if you don't beat Air Force. Can't do it. That that's what that's what Alex Ackerman said. That's what Jeff Jeff Munkin said. You know, we got to get this game to make that December 9th game against Navy it, have as much stakes as possible. You know, now yep. you're not now you're not playing. Your you, the streak was the streak has vanished last December. Now you're playing to get that trophy back to West Point where it hasn't been in more, in more than 20 years, and you're playing to get go to the White House. You know, and 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 that is enough. That should be enough motivation, right? I mean that, that's I mean, what, that's that's I what mean, that's what drives you. That's what drives a player, an army <laughs> player, right? The CIC trophy, these commander in chief games. That's right, man. I mean, it, it's it's everything. It's 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 just a way, you know. Again, you know, I I never even knew what it was like to beat Air Force or Navy one time. Mm-hmm. You know, not even at prep school. Lost lost to them at prep school too. Like the the amount of you know passion I have for Army football and to see these young guys like really understand how important and how much it'll drive you know I'm seven years removed from playing Army football yep. you know and it's still to this day like something that will always eat at me is the fact that I never got to beat Air Force or Navy once you know I got to end my career on a win so I have some solace in that you know and in this and in the, my career with a you know Bowl win, MVP win, um, but uh, you, tra- it, it'll, you trade that yeah. in for a couple wins over Navy and Air Force. Win uh, or no? I would trade. I would trade a bowl win over um, to beat a, a, uh, Army and Air Force. Absolutely. To say that I, you know, you know, for the CIC, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but if we're just saying just to know what it's like to beat them once or twice. Um, yeah, I think I would. Now that is knowing, you know, seven years of built up of never knowing what that's felt like. So, yeah. you know, I do know what it's like to win a bowl game, and it was incredible. So, I just, uh, it's it's one of the rarest uh, rivalries um, you'll see <clears throat> between the three academies. And it's just always something that's going to mean more um, to the players and to the fans than, you know, Alabama versus Auburn. Yeah, you, you look at just what happened, you know, the celebration after Army beat Navy in December in uh, Baltimore. And I, I, I was talking to Coach Munkin about this yesterday. You really can't compare cadets jumping out of the stand, uh, out of the stands onto the field and celebrating with the players when you're going to a, a game at Air Force, uh, playing at Air Force. You know, obviously, maybe a, a, a group of cadets will go, but not the whole core. And, uh, but... The celebration, if you were to beat Air Force on their turf, I, 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 it would be interesting to see, Steve. You know, it would be interesting to see. I mean, for grads like you, I'll tell I mean, you what, just to- every, every Army fan will be on that field. That's for sure. So, cadets, generals, lieutenant, colonels, whoever, 
if you're a West Point graduate, you're going to be on that field. Um, and you're going to want to share that in the moment with, with those players. And those players are going to want to share that moment with you because it's something, like you said, doesn't happen very often, like very, very often. Yeah. Um, and it's a, it's a step to accomplishing the main goal of the, the season. You got to just real quick, we're going to just touch on the matchup here. Um, Army in its last 11 games has nine wins, Steve. They finished last year off with three straight wins. They're six and two this season. Their only losses are road games at Ohio State and at Tulane. They have won on the road this year. They had a pretty, uh, a, a really impressive win at Rice. Um, Rice is not a very good team. You know, Air Force is four and four. They're on a little bit of a roll themselves. Uh, last week they beat a very good Colorado State team um, that had six wins going into the game. And you look at last year that game at Army. If we could talk about it real quick, that was a game where a lot of Army fans were pumped up. Army was pumped up. They thought this was the year for the CIC. And, you know, Air Force came in and smacked Army in, in, in the mouth a little bit. They won pretty handily in that game, and Army only scored 12 points. So, you know, Air Force brings back the quarterback, Arian Worthman, who made his uh, debut last. First game he ever played was against Army last year. And he outplayed Bradshaw in that game. So now Bradshaw comes back with a lot of you know, with a lot of experience and you know a, a little bit more on the roll. And you know it's triple option football number two. Army Steve, Army number two in the country in rushing. Air Force number three. You know, but we always talk about these games that 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 that. Pass, yeah, I wonder who number pass, one is too. Oh, well, so. no, you know who number one is, right? God damn it. Yeah, I know who it is. <laughs> but, you know, we always talk in these service academy games about that one big pass play, you know, that, that can break that can break it. You know, and, yep. and typically Air Force has had the, that, those big pass plays in these games over the last few years. So we'll yep. see. Our, our Army really needs – I mean, Army can't run the ball. Army has to complete – I think Army has to complete a pass in this game to win, Steve. Yeah, I, I, well, we got to keep them honest. We can't allow we can't allow them to continue to crunch the box on us, uh, or we won't we won't allow uh, Bradshaw, uh, Wolfork, or, or whoever's back there and have to be back to, to get established. Um, but on top of that, we cannot come out flat. Mm -hmm. If we get punched, if we get punched in the mouth off the get go, and it's fourteen nothing before uh, we know what's going on, I don't I don't see us coming back from that. I think we have to. Um, I think we have to come out fired up come out with a, uh, a good defensive stop or score on our first drive. I think that is going to be the ultimate, like, that's going to be one of the key points of the game is making sure, you know, we keep the game on our terms. Um, because at, at, at Colorado Springs, um, you know, uh, going down a 14 down hole, I, I don't see us uh, uh, coming back from that. Yeah, I just look at the, the the quick wrap. Maybe I look at the uh, thinking of recent times when Army's played at Air Force. Um, you know, I look at the Max Jenkins game where he came in. Hey, he started for Trent Steelman, and Army dominated the first half. And the second half came out a little bit flat and came out on the short end. I, I remember Trent Steelman with a huge run out there. Um, during a game, and again, the game was close at halftime, but the second half just didn't go Army's way. So, you know, not only a good start, but yeah, you know, they have to be, they have to, no doubt, play consistent in this game. Have to come out, you know, in the second half and play their game too. And they showed Steve in these last couple games a lot of resolve, and and, and to be a, a team that can pull something out in the fourth quarter, and that's what might have to happen on Saturday. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, hey, the, the best part about the last few weeks is that we now have now have the experience of winning close games. Yeah. And they're very recent experiences. Yeah. So we know how to do that um, when it comes down to crunch time. And I think that as long as we continue to pull from that, no matter what, you know, if it's a, you know, one score, 10 point game, you know, coming down with the last 10 minutes, I, I don't think these, or the last five minutes, uh, I don't think these guys are going to flinch. I think they're just going to continue to, to knock it out of the park and, and show that we've, we've gotten over that hump of, of fumbling, not literally, but figuratively fumbling away wins. Um, you know, much like the Tulane game, I think that stung so much. And they realized just how much they let go uh, of when they had in the 
bag that they refuse to allow that to happen again. Yeah, they easily can be seven and one, but you know they they have rebounded from that, and uh, now the, the on Saturday to kick off three thirty on CBS Sports Network. Uh, you can check uh, my uh, Twitter handle for coverage, and I'm sure Steve will have some comment commentary during the game too. Um, great to be back, Steve, and, and we'll we'll talk we'll talk next week about the uh, the Air Force game and look ahead to Duke. Sounds good, man. Man, uh, beat Air Force. <laughs>